Hi, welcome to the Sigma Pad. Believe it or not, I'm finally setting up the lab. There's going to be quite a few videos in the next couple of days of a whole bunch of stuff that have been backlogged, um, and I apologize for that, but I'm finally ready to do this. And I also want to thank so many of you who've been contributing to my Patreon account. I could really definitely use your help. Uh, nothing's been charged to it yet uh, because I haven't produced any videos. And this is going to be a short video. And as I mentioned in, in the Q&A video I made a while ago, uh, short videos will not get charged to the Patreon. Only the regular duration videos will. And this is here, I have something I bought. It's a little bit broken. It's, not, it's functional, but it has a small problem as we will see. And this is a variable isolation transformer. This is a Sencore PR570. And I bought this uh, as, a, as a broken unit on eBay uh, because I'm going to be doing quite a bit of repair as I've done also in the past. And it's always nice to have one of these. And I'll talk about why an isolation transformer is important once we take a closer look at it. So without any delay, let's get started. So what is so special about an isolation transformer? Well, as the name suggests, it provides a degree of isolation between the input and output because it uses a transformer. And in this case, this can be an advantage because you are electrically isolated from the input of the unit, which would be here, to the output of the unit. So you can imagine the hot and the neutral here and the hot and the neutral in the front of this instrument to be isolated from each other because there are on the two separate windings, the primary and the secondary of a transformer. And that means that the voltages coming out of here are no longer referenced to the earth ground and the neutral of the AC line that's, for example, on your wall socket. And that already gives you a degree of protection because you're no longer going to conduct current because there is no DC path and there is no path of current to flow between you and the ground that's on the wall socket. But that doesn't mean that you're completely protected, of course, because you still have a voltage across these two terminals. So if you create a path between these two terminals, you're going to still conduct current and get a nasty shock if you're not careful. But that degree of isolation is already quite advantageous if you're working on something that might be broken or you're not completely familiar with. And that's the most basic advantage of the isolation transformer. There's a whole bunch more. Because you're using a one-to-one -one transformer, you can also do some filtering. You can get rid of common mode noise. You can get rid of high frequency noise, provide a much better power factor to the unit that's going to be connected to the front. And these are all very important and useful things, especially for sensitive electronics. And in hospitals, they use a special hospital-grade isolation transformer to, to do this kind of protection against surges and protection against noise, especially if a human life depends on the instrument that's connected to the output of this. Now you can take that a step further and create a variable isolation transformer. And by that, you can change the turn ratio of the transformer from being 1 to 1 to being, let's say, 1 to 1.5 or 1 to 0.75 or whatever you want it to be. And that will create a different AC voltage appearing out of here. Because remember, the voltage is going to be the ratio of the turns. So for example, let's say you're testing a power supply and that power supply is rated to be used at 110 volts, but you want to make sure it works all the way down to 70 volts. Well, you can do that because you can reduce the voltage here and make sure that your power supply is still working. Or you can go above the AC voltage, which is coming into your house, and to test it even further at higher voltages. And this unit here does much more than that because it can also, for example, trip if the current is too high. If you set it over here, you can measure uh, current and power. You can measure leakage, which is quite handy. So let's say that you have an instrument that has a fault in it and there's a little bit of leakage current going from the hot to the chassis, which is earth ground. And you want to see where that current is going and how much that current is because you're not supposed to be doing that. And for example, if something is wet, can, this can happen. And that, that, that way you're going to be able to test that. It has safety probes input so you can probe various points on the chassis and the unit you're testing and see what the leakage current is. You can uh, switch the hot to neutral, for example, to do some safety tests if it's miswired, for example. There's a whole bunch of other really neat things you can do with this and we will see some of this functionality when I actually start using it in some experiments in the future. But for now, we're going to focus on uh, just trying to fix it. And this actually has an adjustment as supposed to be because it's a variable isolation transformer and I suspect that this is connected to a rod that goes inside the unit which changes the turn ratios of the transformer and I'll show you how that is done as well once we take it apart. And the fault with this is that uh, some of the digits here on the LCD display uh, don't display correctly and I suspect that's a very simple problem. I hope to be able to fix it. It's most likely just a zebra contact between the LCD and the uh, PCB that's going to be behind it so we have to take that apart to see if we can fix it. Other than that, I'm pretty happy with this uh, unit and I'm excited to use it for our next repair. And it's kind of cool also. It has a little 
thing you can pull out and it's got all the uh, instructions written on it and it is kind of nice to have because whenever you're dealing with a safety instrument like this it's good to always have the instruction handy because you don't want people to make mistakes and make assumptions about something that is they think is happening but it's actually not happening so if you misuse this you can you can actually get quite a a nasty shock if you think it's doing something uh, that it is not. So anyway, let's go ahead, take it apart and see what it looks like on the inside. All right, and here's the inside of the unit. It's mostly empty as to be expected. And you can clearly see how simple the construction is. Now there is multiple things here. First, let's start with a simple one. This transformer up here does nothing more than just power the electronics, the display, and all the other things, the relays that are there to switch things in and out. So it doesn't do anything with the actual isolation transformer. The isolation transformer portion is handled by this big transformer and this variac portion uh, that is on, in parallel with the primary of this transformer. Now this guy over here has a couple of different options. It's interesting to see that if if you use a terminal 1 and 2 of this one, you get a factor of 0.12, but if you use a terminal 1 and 4, you get a factor of 0.132. So this guy can actually go above uh, the AC line coming into the house, which is quite nice. All the electronics that you can see the back of PCB here, everything in the front is handled through this. So we're going to have to take this apart to get our hand directly on the LCD screen. But you can see the construction is very simple, and as I mentioned, there is a rod there. So if I rotate this, this rod here goes through, and it goes connects to this part of the isolation transformer then if I were to turn this a little bit you can see a little wiper that goes across the turns right over here you can see and it's got a little carbon contact point and you can clearly see how we can change the turn ratio of the transformer. The, this coil that you see here is in parallel with the primary as I mentioned so you can imagine that by reducing the number of turns here, we are kind of shunting the primary here and not allowing as much coupling uh, from the primary to the secondary of this transformer to take place. And this is in fact uh, exactly how this is supposed to work. So uh, we can go ahead, go from, you know, some from like zero all the way to just over the AC line coming in. So you can see how easy it is to make one of these. It's interesting that there's a power resistor here and I suspect this power resistor here is used for sensing how much power is being dissipated so they're going to have to go over some load naturally in order to be able to create a voltage and that voltage will then be used with some A to D converters which are all on this board somewhere in order to be able to tell you how much current you are using and, uh, and also trip the relays and everything else to disconnect you uh, from the AC line in case the voltage gets too high and the relays and everything is in the front there. So let's go ahead and take it a step further and uh, let's see what's on the other side of this a PCB so we can fix it up. And here's a quick look at the PCB and it's all through hole as to be expected. Uh, I was mistaken actually the little LCD displays are not connected with the zebra connectors to the PCB. They are individually uh, dip packaged uh, LCD screens which is quite interesting. I've seen this before in other other products and uh, it was very easy to fix it because it was just one of these contacts basically had become oxidized and it wasn't making good contact. I just took it out and I reset it back in place and that seems to have solved the problem as I will show you in just a second. The rest of it is quite straightforward. At the back here we have the LCD drivers plus the A to D converter. So these ICs are almost like multimeter uh, style ICs because they drive the LCD and they have input voltages and you can switch and say what they want, what you want displayed on the LCD screens. Pretty straightforward and easy to work with. And these are the knobs obviously from the front, relays to disconnect at, and trip and disconnect you from the transformer as well as trip in case there is current going through the ground and leakage which is not supposed to. Here is our current pickup, most likely for the ground loop over there. Pretty straightforward. There are a whole bunch of op amps and a lot of potentiometers all uh, for calibration which I'm not going to touch because I think this thing is uh, reasonably well calibrated at least based on what I did uh, some tests I did before. So you can see it's a really straightforward unit and I'm going to close it back up and I'll also show you the quickly the block diagram of this just for the sake of completion before we put it all back together and do some basic tests with it. So and here's the block diagram for the sake of completion here and I want to show you the input uh, portion of the circuit which is the most interesting part. Now it's here's the AC line from coming from the wall outlet for example and after the fuse and the trip relay you can see the main transformer I was talking about. This portion over here is the part where you can adjust with the wiper that goes over it. You can see that 
terminal over there can move up and down across this coil which is in parallel to the primary of that main transformer and then the secondary of the transformer is then connected to everything else the other two terminals that are tapped off from the main line go to the other transformer which is just used at uh, the little the little transformer which is used to power all the electronics really this portion is the most important if you follow that you can see that going from the primary to the secondary and the secondary goes all the way forward and then out to the main plug in the front of the instrument everything else is just leakage detection, current detection, trip circuitry, LCD drivers, the LCD A to D converters a whole bunch of other uh, portions which are simply designed to detect the leakage for example with the external probe and all the other stuff is there so really uh, not nothing too exciting to take a look at and you can also see that there is a relay here which is a ground relay so you can actually connect and disconnect the main ground and you can have a, a floating ground and a phantom ground and all the other things that comes with a fully capable isolation transformer but I really wanted to show you the, the basic portion here and follow the signal path, no pun intended to see how it is separating the AC port from the front of the instrument from the main line over there so now that we see this we can go ahead and turn it on and do a couple of quick tests on something familiar and here we are everything is back up and running and I put this back in the lab and you can see that the LCD screens are all fully functional so we should be able to do some basic tests here I'm using the iPhone charger this is an original Apple iPhone charger connected to my iPhone so we can go ahead and see what happens when we vary the voltage that goes into the uh, Apple iPhone charger and there is pooch right there so we can go ahead and try that and see what happens remember this is rated between 110 to 240 volts so it should operate within that voltage without any issues but as it turns out it will operate well below uh, the rated voltage as well so let's go ahead and increase the voltage and see what happens so I'm showing AC volts and I'm here I'm showing power in watts so let's go ahead and increase that right now we have 20 volts keep going 30 volts 40 volts 50 volts and there you go, you must have heard it at around 65 volts it starts working. So at around 65 volts the circuitry inside the power supply, this is a, a buck converter, the DC-DC converter begins to work, it detects sufficient voltage and it, it's able to do uh, sufficient DC regulation for the iPhone to work. And you can see it's consuming 6 watts. So that's all nice and everything, but we can go ahead and turn it back down. Now, as it happens with almost every DC-DC converter, once it starts working, you can actually bring the AC voltage back down and still be able to uh, maintain the operation. So let's go ahead and bring the voltage down. Now we're at 50, and there we go. 40, you can see the power is dropping, so indeed it's not providing the full current to the device anymore. 30 volts and 20 volts and there it is and interestingly enough because this causes a fault condition and uh, the voltage are going up and down it messes with the operation of the iPhone charger now the phone thinks that this is some kind of a weird peripheral that's not supposed to be connected and it says that this accessory may not be supported so the phone is now gone into a protection mode and has permanently disabled charging from this port until a disconnect and reconnect is detected. So let's go ahead and do that to make sure that we can get this up and running again. So I'm going to disconnect this like so and I'm going to reset by disconnecting this and connecting it back and bringing it all the way up to 110 where it is supposed to work actually. Let me do that one more time. There you go, 110. Disconnect and connect back and if I plug it back in we should be able to get our charger back. There it is, it is charging once again and you can see it's consuming in 5, uh, 6 watts or so and I can go above the AC line, there it is, up to 155 volts and it should work obviously without any problems because this is rated at 50, 60 hertz all the way up to 240 volts and you can see it's quite nice and easy to figure out if this is working, we can measure leakage current. Now this obviously is going to have no leakage current simply because I don't even have, this doesn't even have a ground connection, so this test wouldn't reveal anything other than the fact that the instrument itself has no leakage. But it works quite nicely, I'm really happy with it, but the next repair is we're going to use this to repair a quite an expensive optical instrument, so that should be pretty interesting. So as I said before, lots of cool videos coming up, so keep an eye on that, make sure you have notifications on YouTube in case you don't have it, in, so that you don't miss anything. Subscribe to my Twitter account if you like, I'm going to post pictures here and there of how the lab uh, setup is going, and if you like this, make sure you give it a little a thumbs up, and, and if you'd like to support it, uh, jump to Patreon and see what's going on there. Anyway, I hope to see you soon.